So I wanted to film a little bit before I got too much farther along. I've done some work on this thing the last couple days. Uh, we are really close to getting the engine out. I've been trying to get the uh, torque tube bolts out of the back of the bell housing and the bottom two are relatively easy and the top two are a little bit more difficult. Um, had to take out the sensor on the uh, downpipe for the exhaust because that was in the way and then the wires for the starter and the hydraulic line for the slave cylinder kind of in the way but top right bolt wasn't too bad once I got the exhaust sensor out of the way which was really tight but uh, got it out I think that was a big wrench like a 22 or something and then um, the top left bolt wasn't too hard to break free but getting it all the way out uh, took a while since you start putting a little bit of weight on that because the motor mounts are uh, flexible and I put a little bit of I got the uh, got the engine stand hooked up here just uh, kind of giving it a test fit see how it's gonna work and the other day I took off the uh, so this bracket here holds the compressor uh, down on the bottom uh, for the AC and then the the alternator up top so this is going to get replaced because I'm not putting the compressor back on so I've got a different bracket and then a shorter belt that's going to hold the uh, alternator on uh, once we put this thing back together but I wanted to show that and uh, I've also got the uh, condenser all the way out which was uh, pretty straightforward there's just two bolts on that thing uh, so there's the uh, compressor over there that thing is heavy so that'll be good to get gone and not only will it be weight reduction but uh, it'll be parasitic drag on the engine that gets removed as well so it should help with a little bit of horsepower as far as the engine stand i um, kind of never done this before but uh, so this is all the way up against the car and the boom is extended as far out as i can get it and it will not reach the rear engine uh, mount is on the top of the cam tower which has obviously been removed and then the other made for bracket is actually goes right here right there on this bracket um, which I'm also not going to use so I've seen someone do it like this before on the head studs um, and I'm assuming that's what these L-shaped brackets are for and as you see I can't get all the way to the back so hopefully with this leveler which I picked up yesterday from Harbor Freight it's also Pittsburgh um, pretty good reviews on that so far have been pretty easy to use uh, hopefully I can uh, adjust the engine a little bit uh, coming out so right now I just hit the um, the motor mounts with some PB blaster and uh, waiting for that to set in and then we'll take those out and see if we can get this thing out stand by update so I was having trouble with the 13 millimeter focus um, bolts on the bottom of the uh, motor mount so I left those for now I didn't want to break out the impact gun and I took the bigger bolts out of the top um, and then on the other side took out the 13 millimeters uh, that are right here so it is free, however, oh, I also removed the, uh, whatever that thing is, the oil sending unit, or it's not the oil pressure relief valve, I can't remember what that thing is, it's got the oil pressure, it's got the wires on it, and I took off the air oil separator from the other side to give a little bit more room to rock this. So there's about an inch and a half can't quite see it separation on the back but it's still stuck on the uh, drive shaft and the problem I'm having is the uh, oil pan is hitting the cross member so I can't come any farther forward uh, to get it off the drive shaft so as much as I was trying to avoid it, I think I'm going to have to take out the cross member. This big thing that holds the suspension and the car together. Uh, there's only a couple bolts, but it's a big piece. 
and every bolt I have to take out is one more bolt. I got to look up torque values for to put it back in. But I have uh, rocked this and up and down, left and right, all that to get it off of that uh, drive shaft. But so far, nothing. So. I think that's the only way to go. I think, I'm not sure if there's any wires still connected to anywhere in the back, but uh, I'll know better when this thing breaks free and I can move it around a little bit. These are the wires for the oil unit. I can't remember what this thing's called. That thing. So, let me, uh, Take the cross member out and uh, see if that'll work. So, as you can see, the motor is out. Finally, it took a little bit, a little bit longer than I thought. Every, every time I thought I was almost there, uh, I wasn't quite there yet. So, my assumption was that if you were gonna remove the engine through the bottom, that would be the only reason to remove the cross member. Well, you have to, you can't get it forward far enough without the oil pan hitting the cross member, so you have to take it out. Um, so let me show you that. Here's the cross member as it sits in the car. There's really only two bolts on each side, one or one on each side, two total. This is where your control arm hooks in. And then these bolts are for your steering rack. And then in front of that hangs down your anti-sway bar. And it's easier just to take that out and get it out of the way. Uh, two 13 millimeter bolts that go up. I'll show you where all this connects. My steering rack still in there that something's gonna get replaced but so here's your lower control arm so the bolt for the cross member goes there and then up there your two 13 millimeter bolts for your um, sway bar hangs down here so it's right in the way um, let me show you the back So there is your drive shaft. So you see, you have to see how far you got to slide the motor forward to get it off. Um, before you pull it all the way out, you got to disconnect uh, your reference sensors. There is a cable or two brackets 
for your main um, wiring harness. That one you can get to from the bottom. It's actually pretty easy. These are 10 millimeter, and this one's from the top. You got to lean over from the right side fender. It's kind of in the stretch, but with the uh, an extension, you can get it. So that, and then there's two grounds uh, right here that you need to disconnect. So those go. The two grounds go right here, and then your two um, wiring harness uh, holders. One the top one is here, and the bottom one, I believe, is right here. So the bolts that I couldn't show you before, the four bolts on the back of this thing, one, two, three, four, that connect to your torque tube. This one's the tough one to get to, so it takes a while to get that one off. These two are pretty easy. Slave cylinder's in the way because it's right here. Starter, obviously, down here. Um, so you get the slave cylinder out of the way. Then you get to this one, and then you got to pull um, your uh, oxygen sensor off your exhaust to kind of get the exhaust out of the way to get this one. And then this one is just kind of, you can get to it, but you got to turn it, you know, eighth of a turn at a time and then redo it. Um, so you get your two. Uh, your reference and your speed sensors. Um, hopefully I can figure out which one goes where and all the rest of the electrical for that matter. Uh, I think it took a long time to put this, take this thing out. It took, it took even longer to put it back in. Um, I put the bracket back on for the uh, alternator and um, AC compressor just so I'd have this one to try because the engine turns a lot and it turns the, the long side of the oil pan down so it hits the cross member so I thought if I back on and change the lifting point it would help this is an recording is this yeah this uh, it would help keep it straight but as you can see it turns quite a bit um, but this bracket is going to come off because I'm replacing it and um, this was already bent because uh, I'd had it off before this is the bottom bolt on the um, power steering uh, where that mounts to, which power steering is not going back on either, but it got caught. As you can see, bringing it out the top, you can do it without removing the hood. That bolt got caught up on uh, on this, so I have to bang that back down. Uh, when I put this back together, it's going to be a complete engine, so it was a little tight getting out of the top. So I could either remove the hood, which I had one of you all uh, suggest not to do that and do it from the bottom. If I can get the car up high enough on my quick jacks, I'll try to probably do it from the bottom, but I'm not sure if that'll go that high or if my other jacks will get it that high, but we'll see. Um, while we're in here, here's your um, oxygen sensor. You've got your heater control valve, that plastic thing right there. You've got your main wiring that goes on the back. Uh, those two other wires go, actually those wires goes to your starter, uh, your reference sensor, speed sensor plugs, and as you can see I got some, this is your main power line, uh, connects also on one of those grounds, so it's a ground and, or well, not the ground, I'm not big electrical, um, it connects to the back of the block. So I actually thought um, this little coil was part of the AC system but it's actually part of the power steering this line comes across here runs into this one and then it comes down and connects to the rack which I had to cut the line I couldn't figure out how this bracket came off uh, it's just a metal metal bracket there and I couldn't figure out how to get it off so I just cut the line because it's not going back in anyway um, all this is going to get cleaned up a new new manual rack. I'm actually going to switch out the control arms as well. New bushings uh, for all this stuff. Going to go with stainless steel brake lines. Um, switching out the uh, shocks for. Haven't decided which suspension system I'm going to go with yet. Uh, the other thing helps to get out of the way so you can get the the rack out is your. Uh, your uh, steering assembly. So it's just one bolt, this slides down, you see how it's threaded. 
slides down on top of uh, on top of this it just sits down on top and then there's one 10 millimeter bolt that holds it in which uh, if I remember what I did with that one the biggest thing is to put these bolts in a bag and tag them quickly before you lose what they are um, I would do that right now before I start forgetting so while we got the uh, engine out I'm gonna get it stripped down I'm gonna get the uh, oil pump off and the crank out coolers coming off water pumps everything's coming off the block I'm gonna ship the block to Lindsay racing they're gonna uh, clean it inspect it um, see if this cylinder is gonna need any work um, switching out the uh, they're going to gap the rings for me and decide on which pistons and then um, um, I'm also going to send them my intake to get extrude honed I'm going to send in my 24 pin DME get it switched over to 28 so it accepts the rogue tuning uh, AFM to mass airflow conversion I'm going to stick a new uh, hotter cam in it raise the compression slightly take off the power steering and the AC and then uh, see what kind of power we get out of this thing while it's gone I'm going to clean up this remove the rest of the AC um, work on the suspension and strip out everything that we don't need seats radio all that stuff so we can lighten her up uh, so stay tuned for some more videos save the manual